Hey guys, Brandis here with another mechanics guide. Uh, today we're going to be going over the new horn mechanic. So horn 2 gives you a horn totem, and the horn totem has health equal to the amount of enemy pieces times 3. Our opponent has 5 units in play, so our horn totem will have 15 health. And that horn totem has a taunt ability permanently that works kind of similarly to how Axe's ult works. So any unit that is able to attack it is forced to do so. This totem will always try to spawn as close to the center of the board as possible. So either generally on this tile or this tile. Though you can fill up these tiles to force it to spawn in a specific location. Horn 4 gives you the same totem that you get for Horn 2. But you also get two additional totems. The first totem that you get is the Sun Chaser totem. The Sun Chaser totem has one health for each enemy piece. So in this case, it'll be five. And that totem will spawn as close to the back right corner as possible. And it has a 10% chance to disarm an enemy unit when it attacks and does a small amount of physical damage to that piece as well. The last totem that you get is the Sky Dome totem which also has one health for each enemy piece. It spawns as close to the back left corner as possible, and it has a 50% chance to silence an enemy unit when it ults and deals a pretty decent amount of magic damage as well. So as we see here, I'm gonna put a couple units in this corner to demonstrate how we can force this totem to spawn away from this corner if we wanted to and putting the con here can also force this totem to summon here. So here's an example of the Sun Chaser totem disarming the Razor Claw here. It's got a little icon on top of its health bar uh, matching with the totem's icon here that you might be able to make out a little bit. The Razor Claw got disarmed and couldn't attack for a couple seconds there. There's also a couple of uh, interesting strategic or tactical implications to the mechanics of how the Horn Totems uh, work. One of the common strategies that I've seen used in the past with Horn 2 was positioning your units in such a way that forces this front totem here, the horn totem, to spawn behind a majority of your units. You can do that by putting six or more units along this front row here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. When you've done that, it forces this totem to spawn at least uh, in the second row right here. So usually on this tile or this tile, but you can even force it to spawn here uh, along this area. And what that does is against the assassins, when the assassins jump behind your team, they'll be taunted by this totem and they'll spend a really long time hitting the totem rather than your important carry pieces. Uh, another interesting idea that I haven't really seen used much yet because this mechanic is new, but uh, the disarm from this totem seems really powerful. So what you could do if you have, say, a unit that... Um, does a lot of attack damage that you want to try to mitigate how often it gets disarmed. You could teleport that unit from, say, this tile that our Sun Chaser servant's on currently with a teleport dagger and have it teleport to here and try to have it kill this disarmed totem early on into the fight to mitigate how much your carry actually gets disarmed. Uh, there's also some counterplay available to the Horn player where they could try to either force this totem to spawn in a different location. Uh, to protect it from the teleport dagger, or maybe even creating some kind of like teleport dagger trap by surrounding this tile with pieces along here. Um, let me know in the comments below if this guide has helped you, uh, and also what mechanics you'd like to see covered in future mechanics guides. Thanks.